Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Talking Hands podcast. As you can see, I'm on the screen and I am joined by Smart Silver Stacker. Today, we are going to be discussing silver in 2024 and the CPI report for December just came out and we would love to know how that going forward is going to affect metals as well as many experts are expecting multiple, and I mean multiple pullbacks of the interest rate going into 2024. Smart Silver Stacker, how are you today and what's going on? I'm doing great, Silver Seeker. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, Smart's been doing this for a while, guys. He has a channel uh, that he talks about this stuff all the time. And we kind of clash. We both love silver, but we kind of go head to head on our thoughts on silver in different realms. So I thought he'd be the perfect person to have on the show with me. Let's get started straight off. Looking at the CPI that just came out this morning, Smart, uh, it's a little bit hotter than expected. You want to go into that? And how's it affecting metals this morning? Have you paid any attention to that at all? I have, yeah. So we got the CPI for December released today at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And it's interesting uh, what we're seeing here because we've got a hotter than expected CPI, a year-over-year -year headline CPI uh, back up to 3.4%, core CPI 3.9% year-over-year. And yet, we're not seeing the reaction that one might expect in the metals. You know, high, higher than expected inflation in the system that we currently have, where the anticipation of what the Federal Reserve is going to do next is one of the primary factors driving price action, you might expect the metals to decline on this news. And yet, both metals kind of flat for the day. So it looks like it might be a, a different dynamic than what we've witnessed uh, up until this point. You know, many people say that the spot price already has all of this baked in. They already expect the rate cuts and all of that. But then, you know, I just recently read market reports before the CPI came out. And some of these analysts are saying that they expect five or six cuts this year. But then we come out with the CPI report that's actually stronger than expected. So is it possible that with stronger inflation numbers, it actually takes longer for the Fed to pivot? And that's why metals aren't reacting right away? Well, yeah, to the extent that the data, the Fed really is data de dependent, this will put a damper on you know, their ability to cut rates or to uh, return to quantitative easing or any kind of easier monetary policy. But ultimately, I anticipate they will be cutting regardless of where inflation is at, because the economy is showing so many signs of weakness. Right. Uh, it's an election year as well, so we can't disregard that. I, I think the Fed is going to have to cut moving forward. And I don't know what the trigger will be for that, whether it be some significant economic downturn, whether it be a problem in the banking sector. But uh, the economy right now, in my view, is a house of cards. And it's addicted to money printing and growing debt. And it's only a matter of time until the Fed has to cut and has to ease. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. But how quickly are they going to? Because the whole idea, the reason they've been pressing the button so hard is the pullback inflation. And we're, you know, we see it start to ease off, at least, you know, it looks like it, you know, for the most part, it looks like it, at least from a paper standpoint. Um, but now all of a sudden we're seeing it hot again. So I'm just wondering if this is going to cause them to delay. Maybe we won't see the major pullback that we were expecting this year. It's possible. Uh, currently, I'm looking at the CME FedWatch tool, and uh, according to that, markets are anticipating um, somewhere around a 69% chance of a rate cut in March at the March FOMC meeting. I, I think that in this environment, the Fed is going to be in the business of delivering to markets what they expect. Uh, if the Fed were to change their tune and they've already essentially pivoted in my mind uh, with you know what we've heard from Jerome Powell towards the end of 2023 that rate cuts are kind of baked in and I think if they were to change their messaging on that it would eviscerate the markets at this point uh, we already have cuts priced in and I just don't see there being a chance of the Fed really doing that especially in an election year. Fair enough. So let me ask you this. If we do start to see those rate cuts, what do you think is going to happen with metals this year? Is this going to be a good outlook for it? Or is it just going to be the same old same? Rates are going up, rates are going down, silver so staying about where it's been. Well, you have to be cautious with these forecasts because, I mean, I'm as guilty of it as anybody in the precious metal space where, I mean, it seems like we should have already seen a breakout in the price of gold and silver over the past several years. But uh, this time, you know, we really are at the Fed, the much awaited Fed pivot. And I think that when the Fed really gets to the business of money printing, it's probably going to be in excess 
of what markets are already anticipating. Uh, for example, the bank term funding program, you know, that's one metric we can look at. That's the emergency credit facility that was initiated by the Federal Reserve in March of 2023. And if you look at the chart of that from the Federal Reserve themselves, it's been hitting a record high every week since the end of November. So we know that the banking sector continues to be under a tremendous amount of pressure because of elevated rates. All of the low yielding treasuries that are sitting on their books are uh, ha creating a lot of unrealized losses. The Federal Reserve is already basically doing QE by another name via this bank term funding program. And that's just one example of why the Fed is going to have to get back into these markets and they're going to have to intervene. I think not only is the Fed going to cut, but they're probably going to return to quantitative easing. I believe they will begin purchasing treasuries once again to suppress interest rates. There's also the commercial real estate sector. That's another reason why I believe the Fed is going to be forced to lower rates. The commercial real estate sector is seeing huge losses. Uh, we just had the California pension fund uh, having to increase the amount of leverage they have. And their stated reason was to avoid selling assets from their commercial real estate portfolio at fire sale prices. So, you know, again, there's many reasons why I believe the Fed will be forced to intervene this year. And, you know, regardless of where inflation is at, they're going to have to make the decision whether to sacrifice the dollar on the altar of inflation or bail out the economy. And I think we know what path they will take. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with you. We'll see what happens. I would love to keep an eye on this and we'll definitely bring it back up. But let's move on. Going into 2024, um, what about silver stacking itself? Let's talk about, you know, one of the things I cover on my channel quite often is silver, silver premiums. And we've seen a very good pullback. The last quarter of 2023 looked awesome for premiums pulling back. Does that get you excited for getting back into certain silver items? Like I talked about, I might actually be looking at Silver Eagles again, not that, not that they're coming back under, you know, six, $5 an ounce under spot, uh, things like that. Are you looking forward to any of that? Have you seen anything that you that's kind of opened your eyes in this market? Absolutely. Um, I too am taking a look at Silver Eagles. Man, I missed out. SD Bullion had their year-end sale in December. They were selling Eagles for $3.99 over spot. I went to buy some, but they were already out of stock. So I think that shows that, you know, there is some pent up demand for these products like Silver Eagles that have had these sky high premiums. Uh, I believe we may see premiums continue to pull back. One of the reasons I think that is that uh, for now, at least the demand for physical metal, I think is going to be depressed to some extent. Now, that's not because stackers don't want to get their hands on this stuff, but I think it's because as a whole, uh, Americans now are more and more broke. They're coming under pressure from inflation, uh, from wages not keeping up with inflation. So to the extent that you know the demand for physical products was driving up premiums for Silver Eagles and various other products in 2023 and 2022, I think that trend that we've witnessed of declining premiums will remain in effect until we start to see some significant movement in the metals. Then, I mean, we might see the premium spike up again if we get another crisis. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. And I think it's I think it's interesting if you really look at the markets, it seems like every time there's any sort of news, you know, that hits the mainstream news airwaves about silver, gold, or just markets in general, people tend to flood into gold and silver. I mean, that's what we saw back in March of 2023, right? They had the banking crisis and everyone, well, I can't say everyone, but we'll say a significant a significant amount of people got into silver stacking all of a sudden, and you saw the premium skyrocket on things like Eagles, even rounds were like $6 an ounce over spot. But you had talked about how people are hurting right now, and I just did an interview with a coin shop owner, I want to say a week and a half ago now, this is Josh from Monat Coin and Bullion, and he talked about how a lot of people are coming into a shop and selling because they are hurting. Now, I had a couple of comments say, no, it's not that people are hurting, I disagree. I personally have friends that don't have silver, but if they did, they'd be selling it right now. And and we're seeing we're seeing with the increasing prices of everything. And I know we just looked at CPI. I think people tend to forget that inflation coming down doesn't mean that the prices of everything are coming down. We're still dealing with the price increases that we had to deal with with all this high inflation over the last couple of years. It's still going up just at a slower rate, but the rates, the the amount of money that people are making, they're they're just not making enough to cover it. And so there's a lot of people hurting right now. And I think people that are sitting on silver would be selling right now if they're hurting 
And like I said, those friends of mine that I have that are hurting, if they had silver, I know for a fact they'd be selling it today. Um, so those that do have it, I think you're going to continue to see until we really see some sort of market swing that gets gold and silver back into the news media, whether it be another bank crash, whether it be, you know, something on the world stage, another war, whatever it may be. As soon as people start thinking about silver and it hits those mainstream airwaves, we definitely could see those premiums turn back around. But until we do, I am so happy to be able to take advantage of lower premiums. I actually did take advantage of that sale and got some silver eagles when they were cheaper. Uh, you know, I stacked some one ounce of a rounds uh, that I was able to get cheaper as well because of those premiums coming down. And my plan is to continue to do so while I have the chance, because I think you and I both know that silver is incredibly undervalued right now. And if you add to that low premiums, you're able to pick up silver and add it to your stack for what, in my opinion, is almost nothing compared to what it should be worth today. <laughs> what are your thoughts on everything I just said? Though? That was a mouthful. Yo. What 100%. Uh, I, I believe that the reason that we are seeing folks exiting the physical space is not necessarily because they want to, it's because they need the cash to pay for food, to pay for rent. Uh, in the CPI report released today, uh, food hitting a record all time high. So uh, the fact that we're seeing the, you know, quote unquote disinflation, uh, that's a term that gets thrown around a lot. It just means that inflation isn't going up as fast. Like you said, all that inflation is still baked into the cake. We would need deflation to get back to anything resembling uh, normal in terms of prices, but that's not going to happen. And yeah, today, I mean, the fact that silver is at 23 and change with low premiums, I mean, this is the time when you want to buy. I think silver is a long-term holding, and it's also kind of a conviction uh, purchase. Now, I don't know what you've seen in terms of the sentiment in your audience, but I have noticed since December, around that time, the end of 2023, it seems like there's been a significant uptick in negative sentiment regarding silver. Now, it's just anecdotal, of course, but I think that that is kind of backed up by the declining premiums. And of course, you know, I, I'm kind of a contrarian at heart. I think that the time to buy assets is when they are unloved and when no one else is buying them. The time to sell is when there's a crisis and everybody wants to get into the safe havens. And you're exactly right that in March, when the banks began failing, I mean, we saw a huge influx into the precious metals market. And the thing to understand about silver is that the physical retail silver product market is so tiny that even if you had, you know, 1% of, say, the market cap of like the magnificent seven stocks, I, I mean, you would see the price of silver moving up multiples of where it is today. If any significant amount of capital moves into the physical silver space, you could see massive movements. And, you know, the paper price won't even matter at that point, I don't think. So uh, I, I did manage to get some of those uh, freedom rounds that SD Bullion had. Uh, those will be showing up soon. I'm excited about that. And I'm going to keep stacking and I'm going to be focusing on where the premiums are lower, what the best deal is. You know, uh, Eagles, I think are great. I think we could see the premiums on Eagles spike up once again if there is another crisis. And I anticipate, of course, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but the way things are going uh, on the world stage, as you say, we've got global war on the books for 2024. It looks like we have a massive banking crisis. Uh, the fact that investors are ignoring that, I think, is a huge opportunity for stackers. And you know, maybe it sounds like a broken record, like you got a lot of opportunities in silver over the past couple of years, but just because someone's early to stacking, it doesn't mean they're wrong. You know, it just means they're early. And when this party gets started, I mean, you're going to have to be early because when you're late, it's going to be too late. Like in March, you try to order silver and it takes six weeks to get to you or the premiums, you know, on junk silver eagles of 60, 70 percent, 100 percent in the case of eagles. I think we could 100 percent see that occur again in 2024. In fact, I am counting on it. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an advocate for that happening. I don't want that to happen. And I personally don't think I, I didn't buy any Eagles for probably two years because the premiums were too high. Uh, so and in a situation like that, I think there's two things you can look at. One, when you take advantage of low price silver Eagles like we're talking about right now. I mean, there was a significant opportunity last night, last year to arbitrage that sil those silver Eagles into just more silver by swapping it out for lower price silver rounds, silver bars. And I think that's something that people should take advantage of when they have that opportunity just to increase their silver stack. Um, I mean, the fact of the matter is, 
is even if you don't like eagles, they're still the most popular and most respected one ounce silver coin in the world. So people, if they tend to move into the market, that's the first place they generally go. Now, the the other thing I want to say is, is we talk about how now is a good opportunity, smart um, to get in the silver. But I also just want to caution, and I talk about this all the time, that people should still understand that. And the reason I'm going to, I'll tell you why I'm going to say this. I don't know if you've heard me talk about the story before, but the reason people should still understand that having money is still important. So you shouldn't be going in the debt to stack silver and you sure as hell shouldn't be putting it on a credit card or mortgaging your house. And the reason I say that is back during the silver squeeze back in 2021, February, um, I saw people, I was watching a video on Salivate's Metal, Metals channel. Whenever I'm watching a video, I'll scroll down and read the comments. And I saw a guy who specifically said, I took out a second mortgage on my house and put it all in the silver. Now we all know what the premiums looked like, you know, March, April, May of 2021, you know, post the silver squeeze nonsense. That guy today is still underwater on everything that he bought. So silver, like you already said, is a long-term hold. Don't go overzealous getting the silver thing that tomorrow you're going to wake up and be a millionaire because it's just not going to happen. But that doesn't, that doesn't make it any less important to do so. Just do so responsibly is, is kind of where I'm getting at with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is wise advice. Uh, I've never advocated using margin or debt, although, you know, I haven't expounded on that point perhaps as much as I should, because you're right to caution people. I think it's very important to have cash on hand in this environment, average into precious metals, use excess savings to stack metal. I mean, if you go into debt to buy metal, you really stand a risk of being a weak hand and being forced to sell your metal at an inopportune time because you need the cash. So yeah, having an emergency fund, very important. I think even beyond having an emergency fund, having some cash set aside in case we do see some massive deflationary event. I mean, it's always possible that you could see the paper price, especially of silver coming under significant pressure in this kind of environment. I mean, one thing I think that we will see in 2024, no matter what else happens, is significant volatility. And that is due to the nature of our economy, due to the amount of debt that has been accumulated, due to the uncertainty in this environment. So yeah, don't mortgage your house to buy silver. Um, try to set, you know, try to, I would say, cut expenses as much as you can to kind of, you know, tighten up your uh, your, your wallet and have some extra cash that you can put into metals, but you, you, there's no guarantees with silver and it's a highly volatile market, uh, sure. even more so than gold. So you definitely have to be very cautious with that. Uh, however, I will also say that I wouldn't want to go into this environment with no metals uh, because you know if all you've got is cash, that's basically guaranteed to be devalued over the long run. So uh, you know, you've got to take a balanced approach and leverage is not good with the precious metals. I would agree. I mean, if you want to speculate, physical metals are not really the, the vehicle for that. No, absolutely right. Um, and I appreciate that you said that. And I, I know, I don't think anyone covers it enough. I just, I remember, you know, we'll just kind of get in the story time here. I remember, you know, the beginning of the silver squeeze. And and between you and I, I was on board for like the first three weeks. But, you know, I I realized what was happening really quickly. And and what was what what that really shows me, though, if, if you think about that, is it really shows how the demand for physical precious metals doesn't really affect the spot price at all. It's the amount of metals that are actually, you know, bought and sold for physical stacking is so minuscule that even if we saw a major rush on, you know, silver from all the online retailers and wholesalers and even local coin shops, it really wouldn't move the needle very much as far as the spot price itself is concerned. And we saw that back in February. Now everyone was excited, you know, Atmex had actually pulled all of their silver off of their site until the markets opened up Sunday night, right? And so there were obviously people buying in the silver on the market that day. And as soon as the, as soon as the market opened, you saw it jump. Uh, I, I think it was, I don't even think it was a full 10%, but it definitely had a big spike. But by the end of the day, it was back down to where it had started and maybe even a little bit lower. And then the same can be said if you look at March, you know, when the banking crisis happened, what, yeah, we saw metals, you know, we saw metals make a little bit of a move on the market, but what we incredible, what we saw really make a move again was premium. So the demand for physical silver, I know this is kind of off topic from where we just were, the demand for physical silver 
affects the premiums way more than it affects the spot price. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because the spot price is the price of a futures contract. Like that's what yes. people have to understand. It's it's not the price of physical metal that is actually changing hands. Now, I do think what is possible, and I'm not saying this is going to happen in 2024. I do think it eventually will occur is that we could see a disconnect between the physical price of the metal and the paper price. Uh, so premiums will not be a thing anymore. There will just be the price of physical metal and the price of a paper contract. Uh, we saw what happened in the nickel market in uh, 2022, where you had a massive short position. Russia invaded Ukraine. That kind of got investors freaked out. There was a huge short squeeze. The price of nickel jumped like, I don't know, more than 100% within a very short period of time. And what happened? Well, the LME, they halted trading in nickel. They bailed out the Chinese nickel magnate, uh, Zhang Guangda is his name. He's a billionaire nickel industrialist. He had this huge short position that got unwound and he got squeezed and they saved him in the paper markets. Now, I think you could see something like that in over, especially, but the difference with nickel, I mean, it's very difficult to take physical delivery of your nickel. Whereas with silver, you can actually stack a significant amount of value in a you know, relatively small space. And so I think that the difference there is if you were long nickel when that squeeze occurred and that paper market uh, manipulation was basically revealed, you got screwed. You got penalized. And they actually lost their lawsuit, the, the investors against the, the LME or the LBMA, if I remember correctly. I mean, I, I don't have the article in front of me. But uh, I think the difference is that if you have physical silver, you're going to be sitting pretty when the disconnect occurs between the paper and the physical market. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that at all. That's a very good look at it, by the way. Um, well, I think smart. I think this was there anything else you wanted to add? Because I think we've been going around 22 minutes here. So we should probably call it. I don't want people to lose too much interest. But was there anything you wanted to add that uh, we didn't bring up today? Or do we want to save it well, for next week? Uh one last thing I want to mention is you talked about the silver squeeze and yeah. how Atmex pulled all of their products uh, over the weekend there. Maybe that was a nothing burger, but the folks at Atmex are not stupid. And so I think that that's kind of a confirmation, at least that industry insiders and people who really understand the workings of the physical silver market acknowledged that there was the possibility of the paper market's falling apart. So, you know, maybe it didn't happen, but a company like Atmex doesn't stop doing business over, uh, you know, a rumor or uh, something that isn't possible uh, in reality. So maybe it didn't happen that time, but should the Fed return to money printing? Should they, you know, debase the dollar? Should there be another major financial crisis? It's very possible that you could still have a short squeeze in the silver markets occur. So that's just one last thing I wanted to comment on. But other than that, uh, no, it was great being on today. I really appreciate you having me on Silver Seeker, and I look forward to doing this again. Hey, you know, I, I wanted to add really quick that that point you just brought up about Atmex. I had never thought about it that way. That's a really good way to think about it. Just wanted to put that out there. Wow. Okay. I, I never. I've. I of all the times I've ever thought about the silver squeeze or even talked about it, I never had that angle come like even pop in my head you really are a smart silver stacker <laughs> so <laughs> so listen guys uh happy to have smart silver stacker on he has his own channel of course make sure you go over there he does a lot of live streams covering the market and analysts and or, and market analysis and things like that so if you guys are interested in that head over there of course we will uh, have him on next week as well we're going to try and have this be a recurring thing so let me know what you thought down in the comments below and smart thanks again for joining me yeah thanks talk right. to you next week see you then